<laughs> that I can get through this. Um, I mentioned it in, in the 70s that counselor ed people were beginning to look at their coursework a little differently, particularly for mental health counseling. The psych of people in Ohio, the psych laws which you passed in Ohio in 72. And uh, there was a guy in Cleveland who worked in a community college and did assessment on the side. He was a counselor. He got arrested for practicing psychology. And the, um, he, he ended up being acquitted. The judge didn't, you know, the judge's rationale was, uh, listen, I know some lawyers that use psychological principles. So I'm not going to convict a counselor for using psychological mm -hmm. principles. And he, 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 that was, but that was a wake up call. Mm -hmm. Because that said to people, wait a minute. Hey, the psych board went after somebody using some assessment instruments? We need counselor licensure. Maybe we're not safe. Mm -hmm. And so that's when counselor licensure began to really get looked at as something we needed to do in Ohio. A commission was put together, and the first meeting, these people showed up. Let me tell you, they didn't show up after that. <laughs> <laughs> I just love it when I look at some of the old newsletters, and they say, and this happened, and this happened, and I think, and I lived through it, and I think, oh, yeah, I think, where did we see them? In the hallway at the first meeting, and then they never came back. So uh, it, this was something that people wanted to see what was going to happen, and then, you know, those that were really interested stayed. The, and remember, the Ohio Personnel and Guidance Association is what we think of as OCA today. So OCA, basically, OCA put together a group of people who was to study this a little bit, try to figure out. The two people on here that were most important in the long run were Jane Bartlett and uh, Mel Whitmer, because they were people that led the way um, for the first part of the licensure effort. We introduced the licensure bill four times, and uh, during the early days, well, started out with the counselor bill, started out with the, and the social workers had their own bill. I think it was after the second time the bills were introduced, uh, the legislature said, you better both get together because we're not going to have two licensure bills. So then, you know, an old uh, counselor and social worker bill, the, or legislation began to be pushed. Now, the social workers wanted to have a practice bill. The counselors wanted a practice bill too, but they would settle for a title bill, meaning that, that if you called yourself a professional counselor, then you had to be licensed. But you could call yourself a therapist or something else, and you wouldn't have had to be licensed. So title bills are really not worth much. And I think the biggest mistake that ACA then AACD, then APGA, was pushing, was the notion that title bills could do anything. One of the things that we're uh, dealing with today in trying to get Medicare recognition at the national level is that we've got so many different requirements in states across the country. You know, you, you pick up a newsletter a couple months ago from ACA and they say, California, 50th state to get counselor licensure. What they don't say is some states require this and some states require that. So when you start talking to national, to people nationally about what's required, they aren't sure. In this state it's this, and in that state it's this. Ohio, and this is to me what we did best and, and have never gotten the credit for because we bucked up against the national on it again and again and again. The national was handing out model bills in the 80s, model legislation, follow this, follow this. Milk toast definitions of counseling. Milk toast definitions of counseling. And no notion that don't take a title bill because if you get a title bill, and you don't have a practice bill, you can spend the next 20 years getting rid of the title bill and getting a practice bill. So we knew we were going to go with, with what, as far as we could go with what we had. And it's interesting, as a bill is, uh, is um, introduced, a piece of legislation is introduced, this was um, 
substitute or Senate bill 529 or 329. This is about the, I think this was the third one that we introduced. And then this was the one that eventually passed. What happens when you when you piddle with these bills over three or four times is wording gets changed. Mm -hmm. And you have to be very, and then all kinds of amendments. And so you have to read legislation very, very carefully because things can change on you and you may not, you may not even realize that it's changed. Well, when we were working on the last version of the bill, uh, which passed in 1984, and I'll say a little bit more about that, but when we were working on that version of the bill, it was clear to me that we had a practice bill. And the social workers, who knew, they thought, social workers, there's lots of social workers in Ohio, there were lots of social workers then. Social workers and psychologists have always had very close relationships. Because in my opinion, frankly, I'm going to say this nicely, the social workers have always been the flunkies of the psychologists. And so they've had very nice relationships all along the way. Counselors do many of the things that psychologists do and they're more of a direct threat because we were always saying, oh, we can give tests. We can give tests, we know how to give tests. Social workers weren't much interested in giving tests. That wasn't their philosophical bent. So there was a different way of looking at the world um, from the social worker vantage point and the, and the counselor vantage point. The social workers really didn't pay much attention to us, even though we were part of their bill, and even though we would go to hearings for them, because they, they were getting through with very little opposition. We were getting pillared. I mean, everybody was against us getting licensure. And, uh, but as I read that bill, I said, geez, we've got to practice bill. The language has changed. An or was put in the language that hadn't been there before. And we had a practice bill. I knew we did. We finally got through. And in a minute, I'll tell you how we confirmed that we had a practice bill. But we, in the early days, I, we, we must realize that people like Mel Whitmer and Jane Bartlett went to hearing after hearing, mm -hmm. sat for hours. And there wasn't a lobbyist there. We didn't, we didn't have the town and group like we have now. There wasn't money that uh, people, people drove. They paid their own gas. Mm -hmm. If they had to stay over in a motel, they paid their own money. Now, there, and we're talking lots and lots of people. We're talking five, six people that, did, that carried the water on this pretty much. Charlotte and, um, well, Jack Cochran from Akron was, was one that would testify too. But Charlotte and Mel Whitmer kind of uh, petered out. They just got tired. And you can do this for so long, and you, 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 know, you just can't keep on doing it. And, uh, and in 1984, we thought we had, we had great sponsors, we had two great sponsors. We thought we had a chance on going to put, put these guys in. Uh, Schwartzwalder and Dean Conley and Michael Schwartzwalder, they were our sponsors. We really felt like we had a chance to get through. They were very hardworking guys. And we were confident that maybe we could make it. And Bill and I were, we had Bill Nemeth from the University of Akron. Um, who has now since retired, and I were, were working on it literally day and night to at the legislature, sitting there and hearing after hearing. And the psychologists were working so very difficult, and they difficult, working very hard to make sure we got there. And they would amend, but that's how you do it. You amend the legislation, and amend it, amend it, amend it, till you have nothing left. And um, the first counselor bill, uh, the first counselor legislation that went through, and that is here, had in it um, licensed professional counselors with an endorsement. The endorsement to diagnose and treat mental and emotional disorders. Okay? And, we, and they would have sent in amendments every time they could to try to change that. The last amendment that they put in, that they were able to get in, was in conference committee. And it was um, to anyone that would get the endorsement, had any endorsed counselor would have to show that they could enter in, could be accepted by a PhD program. So 
okay, you're getting your clinical counseling work now, but you would have to prove to the board that you should be licensed as clinical counsel by also including a letter of acceptance from a doctoral program to show that you could be accepted into a doctoral program. We did not want that amendment, but we could not get that amendment out. It was either we take the bill with that amendment or we um, lose the bill. And, and I have the most vivid memory David, of Bill Nemec, who's about what, six, what, six, three, four, let's see, I'm bigger than me, and Stan, Schwartzwalder was coming down the steps to tell us, you know, I can't get this out, and we're in that stage, we're May, legislature's going to be gone shortly, we've got to either do it or not, and uh, he's standing there on the steps, Schwartzwater's here, he's standing here on the steps, and I'm standing here. We have Schwartzwater, and he's saying, I can't do it, I can't do it. And we're saying, you have to do it, you have to do it. We'll take that amendment, you have to do it. And he went back in, and some, and somehow, I suppose, by saying, you know, they'll, they'll accept that amendment. We, we got it through the conference committee and out. Voted on in the House, voted on in the Senate, and then the governor signed it later. Governor at the time, the governor, and that was another thing that was very important. Republicans theoretically, philosophically, were very much opposed to regulation of the professions by the government. Okay? And the governor at the time was Celeste. The last Democrat that was governor until the one we've got now. And we knew he would sign the bill because we had a friend that knew his sister-in-law, and we, were, we kept we kept in communication with the friend who knew the sister-in-law, and we knew he would sign it if we could get it to him. And so we had we felt we had to get it through then, or we would be in trouble. Um, it was a very different time than it is today. No political, political action committees were not what they are now. The legislature was run by, there was an old time legislator in the state who's really uh, worth two or three history books, Vern Reif, uh, or he, or he was worth two or three biographies. He really controlled what happened in the state legislature from, from uh, the Portsmouth area, Portsmouth, Ohio. That's why there's a Shawnee State down there because he put it there. There's some politicians, and he, and he was uh, Speaker of the House, and there's some politicians that were just that strong. We knew we had his support, too. So we had built key places where we had support. And, uh, and you know, thank God we, we, we got through um, the, that particular battle and fight. We were fought bitterly by the Ohio Psychological Association. And um, we were also fought by the prosecuting attorneys because the prosecuting attorneys did not want either social workers or counselors to have privileged communication. So when you think about having privileged communication, think about it as some real important thing that people really fought for to get for you because that was something that, I mean, prosecuting attorneys fought that bitterly uh, in, in, for both social workers and counselors. We were saved by a legislator in, uh, out of Toledo, uh, Mary Jean Valaket. And Mary Jean Valaket, in the, in the, on the floor of the Senate down in Columbus, gave one of the best speeches I ever heard defending privileged communication. And uh, I, it really surprised me. Later on, we found that she, in fact, had been seeing a counselor for some drug and alcohol issues, and she apparently knew of what she spoke because she spoke with such eloquence that she saved the day on privileged communication. So sometimes you get help where you don't know you're going to get help, and you don't know why you got the help.